I'd like to call this meeting of the Town Council for July 18th to order. If you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We're all present tonight, which is a good thing. Um, by way of announcements, um, the FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, who is serving as FEMA's mapping partner, scheduled three flood risk review meetings, also known as work map meetings, for communities to review their work maps due to flood map improvements. These meetings are scheduled for the following locations and times. And they all happened already. Tuesday, July 16th at 1.30 in Haverhill, Mass. At the Haverhill Library, Wednesday, July 17th at 9 a.m. The Manchester Department of Public Works in Manchester. And Wednesday, July 17th at 1 p.m. at the New Hampshire Fire Academy in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, so I apologize for that announcement being late, but that's when our meeting occurred. Um, so if you're interested in the, the updated flood maps, I'm sure you can find it either online or contact um, these folks or contact Town Hall and we'll help you get in touch with them. Um, Merrimack Town Council would like to express our deepest sympathy to the family and friends of Scott Burgoyne who passed away on Sunday, March 14th. Scott was an employee of the town since 2015 as a mechanic too in the Equipment Maintenance Division of the Public Works Department. He was a talented mechanic and a wonderful person that will be sorely missed. Um, Upcoming town council meetings, Thursday, August 15th at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room is a regular meeting. Uh, and then we get back into the regular year and have two a month, Thursday, September 12th at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room and Thursday, September 26th at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room. Eileen, did you have anything to add? The Parks and Recreation Department will be holding their second free movie night uh, in the park of in the park movie night in the park. It's called of the of the summer on Sunday, July twenty first. This Sunday um, at our Abbey Griffin Park, the movie Mary Poppins Returns will be shown, um, which will be at dusk. In recognition of National Ice Cream Day, free ice cream will be given out at the movie. In the event of inclement weather, the movie will be rescheduled to a later date. <coughs> For details, contact the Parks and Recreation Department. The National Night Out event will be held on Tuesday, August 6th at the American Legion. This event is a partnership between the Police Department and the Parks and Recreation Department. Activities are from 6.30 to 8 p.m., followed by a free movie, Incredibles 2. Um, the police department will open their doors at 5 p.m. for tours and static displays. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions at this point? At this point, we reach the comments from the press and public. Anybody wishing, wishing, wish, let me start over. Wishing to address the council <laughs> may do so at this time. Please come forward and, and identify yourself. Seeing none, we'll move right along. Uh, brings us to recognitions, resignations, and retirements. We have a couple, but I don't believe either of them are here. Corey Davenport or um, Curtis Conrad? Yes. Having been on the Parks and Rec, I, I know Corey Davenport. Um, I got to meet him. Corey came to town, got involved, and wanted to be um, part of the committee and learn about Merrimack. Uh, uh, he did a great job, and his efforts were greatly appreciated. Really nice, uh, nice man. Awesome. Any other thoughts or comments? We have a certificate for each of them, uh, thanking them for their, their uh, time and work for the town of Merrimack. We very much appreciate it. Couldn't run many of these committees without their, uh, without their help, and so we, we really appreciate all the, the effort that people put in and, and realize that at times they have to move on, and uh, we'll miss them. Any other comments? Um, so that was Corey Davenport from Parks and Rec Committee. 
And then uh, Curtis Conrad from the Technology Committee is resigning that position as well. Um, and, and again, we appreciate very much all the work that people do volunteering. Eileen. Um, you need to accept the resignations, please. Uh, so I need a motion to accept the resignation of Corey Davenport from the Parks and Rec Committee. So, so moved. moved with regret. Motion Second. made by Bill and seconded by Barbara. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstaining? Passes 7-0. Zero. Um, zero. And Curtis Conrad from the Technology Committee. So moved with regret. Motion to accept his resignation with regret. Seconded, uh, made by Bill, seconded by Barbara. Um, any other comments? Go for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstaining? That passes 7 0 0. So we, we appreciate their efforts and thank you very much. There is a certificate going around that needs signatures from everybody, please. It's working. Um, that brings us to appointments. We have an annual review with the Heritage Commission. And I see Anita made it to the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, submitted by the Heritage Commission, Chair Anita Krager. For Town of Merrimack Charter, Section 6-6, -6, at least annually there should be an annual review with the Heritage Commission. This agenda item is to highlight the Commission's significant actions, current projects, anticipated actions and to raise any concerns the council should know or could act upon. Anita, thank you for joining us. Hi there. I'm going to use the annual report as my guide, but I have more to go on it. Uh, we had five meetings last year in, in 2018. We've had four more so far this year. Another one coming up soon. Uh, we do have a new member. Gigi Jennings, Jennings, so we actually have a full complement of our regular members. Still have no um, alternates, and we're still seeking. And we welcome Barbara as our new liaison. Pardon? Three. Yep. Yes, correct. And we actually had all of them there this month which has been unique in itself, right, Lon? <laughs> uh, the tour brochures that we have come up with are still going faster than I can print them. I've had 400 printed just in the last month. A lot of them were given out at the 4th of July and a lot more. They're popular. They're going to be upgraded, updated soon because there were some changes in there. Some of the buildings that are in the brochures aren't there anymore. That's one of the things. But there are some other things that have come up since then, so they will be updated. The youth that designed them for us before is home on college vacation right now, and he says he'll be updating them for me this, this summer before he goes back. That's but awesome. in the meantime, we still got a lot of them out there. Library has them, town hall has them. The the week before the taxes were due, we went through almost 200 of those brochures. Everybody standing in line took them. I can't believe there's nobody in this town that doesn't have a copy yet. <laughs> really. <laughs> okay, the display case at the top of the stairway has not been changed since last July. When we took the display from the 4th of July thing and put it in there, the new 4th of July one will be going in next week because it's sitting in my car waiting for me to get here to do it. The display committee from the Historical Society has no, not done any displays in the last 12 months. So, And I resigned as the president of the Historical Society, so it's my, not my job anymore. <laughs> but we'll work on it. Our new president has contacted all of our new members, and hopefully things will get moving. But in the meantime, since I have the display in the car, it will be in there soon. Uh, the commemorative plaques that go up on the houses, the egg-shaped ones, we still have, well, as of last week, we had 16 that had not been put on houses yet. Three of them went up in the last two days because I delivered them Sunday and Monday and have put them up myself. And more of them are going up very soon, right, Lon? And right, all the rest of them. Because a number of people took them with them to, 
erect them themselves. The welcome to Merrimack signs, as you've seen, have been installed. And there have been many questions as to why some of them say 1746 and some, some of them say 1750. The south half of, half, half of our town, up to the Saugegan River, got a charter in 1746. Four years later, the north end of town got attached and we got a new charter. So if you look at the signs, they don't all say the same and it makes people ask questions, which is a good thing. That's great, <laughs> yeah. They um, noticed, that's a good thing, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We did have a booth on the 4th of July we made all of, I think, $22 profit off of it, but it is not intended as a fundraiser. It's intended as an educational type of thing. And we did have a lot of interest people coming in. The display we had was on Merrimax Bridges, which you will see soon out here. And there were a lot of questions, not just the covered bridges, but a lot of others too. So go look at the display next time you come by, which better not be for another two days. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to go home by, by <laughs> it the It won't be up tonight. It's in the <laughs> car, but I've got to get back. Uh, the shingles from the old roof we have available for sale. We have um, decoupaged them with the town seal on them, and they're oh, available. Gosh. In the last probably eight months, we've sold six of them, and a lot more interest. A lot of people at the 4th of July would have bought one if they didn't have to carry it around with them all afternoon. So they'll be back. How much are those? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Pardon? They are the actual slate yeah. shingles from the old town hall. That's a good idea. Yeah. We could. That's a really good idea. Sure, we can do that. Okay. Very good. Good idea. I hadn't thought of that one. Um, the Class 6 roads, we're working on tracking the exact locations of the Old Kings Highway, Old Greater Road, and Old Blood Road. Of course, there are new roads called Old Kings Road. There are the new Blood Road and the new Greater Road. But they all do connect with one another, and we're working on walking them all and eventually hoping to have signs wherever these roads cross current roads so that people will know where they are. We have found some very interesting things as we have searched these things out, where the road has changed its location when a developer came in and wanted to buy some of the land and have it go through it. So they swapped land from one place to another, and the road kind of goes this way sometimes. But we are walking them and tracing the whole thing. Um, the Sklar Park situation, nothing has changed on that. They say they have a subcommittee which has three members, one of which is me, but they haven't had a meeting yet. So we're going to see what's happening. Our plan for the future, we're working with the uh, Historical Society in Litchfield, is to have a park on each side of the river at Thornton's Ferry. And our dream is to have a couple ferries go across when they open. It would be cool. It would be cool. <laughs> They actually have one of the poles from the original ferries in Litchfield. Mm. So who knows? Maybe we can do it without breaking the pole. I think we'd be in trouble if we did. <laughs> you would be in big trouble if you did that. I'll let them use the pole. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. We're still working on the Simons Rock situation. Simons Rock is on Penichuk land. It is on the National Location of Historic Pla Register of Historic Places. And it is the center of all surveys done before 1750 in southern New Hampshire and northern Massachusetts. All the surveys went from that rock, which is the second largest glacial erratic. It's huge. It's also covered with graffiti. Uh, what our, my hope is to get the okay. We've been working with the legal people from Penichuk and from the town, they want assurance at Penichuk that they will not be liable if somebody gets hurt down there. Mm. We have all of the regulations, <laughs> thanks to Tom Mahan that provided them, provided them all to me. There should not be a problem where we just have to have legal 
assurance. They're concerned not with just somebody getting hurt there, but when somebody considering con continuing down the road beyond the rock and getting down to the dam mm -hmm. and having a problem there. So the plan is to put up another gate and no trespassing signs and all that kind of stuff. But it isn't done yet. My hope is that an Eagle project will come before us once we get the okay and we can get the graffiti cleaned out, clear out some of the undergrowth, put up a fence and a sign telling you what it all is about. But Penichuk does not want any signage until we assure them that we're not attracting people. It will be a problem to them. We're not making a nuisance for them, huh? I understand, but it's frustrating because this has been going oh, yeah. on for a year and a half. And our Boy Scout troop is now sponsored by the Fish and Game Club right there on that road on Al Paul Lane. And I'm sure one of our boys is the one that's going to have an Eagle Project there because they go there all the time. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody goes there. It's amazing how many people know about it. But they don't know the history of it. They just know that there's a big, a big rock, rock with paint all over it. <laughs> Historic homes are attempts to finding an old home that we could use for headquarters for the Historical Society have gone for nothing at this point. The one up in Reeds Ferry no longer stands. It's gone. That was Greg Michael's place. The one from Reverend Wright's home is still there and will remain standing, but it's not possible for it to belong to us because it was purchased by somebody who got a bargain, a big bargain. A great bargain, yeah. <laughs> But he is converting it into housing, and he will keep the outside of it in historic. Yes. Anita, weren't you guys using the old schoolhouse down in the? We still have the schoolhouse. Still have the schoolhouse. It is not big enough for us, okay. and we were hoping to find some place along Route Three to be our headquarters that was more accessible. <clears throat> At which time, if there was land with it, we have been offered a grant to move the schoolhouse to that location as well. Wow. But we can't get the grant until we have somewhere to put it. And the grant may not be still available by the time it comes, if it comes. And I'm not the president anymore. <laughs> so that doesn't mean I don't care. It doesn't mean I won't still be around. You don't get rid of me that fast. Okay, we hope to have another scavenger hunt. We've had two in the past, and we've had requests for another. In our, we hope for this fall. But again, depends on whether I can get volunteers to help when I'm not the boss. I'm working on it. We do have something that has happened just recently. If you noticed out in the hall, there is a picture out there, a portrait of John Wheeler. He is the man who built Wheeler Chapel. No, he was not a minister, but he was a deacon. But he gave a big contribution to the town of this building to be used for community purposes, not as a church. Matter of fact, he even said in his will he did not want a spire on it. They took up a collection, put a spire on it, anyway, after he died. <laughs> but um, his picture, his portrait was at the chapel, and it disappeared after it was damaged. A broomstick apparently went through it. We don't know how, why, when, or how, but it was taken down to the Boston Art Museum to be repaired, and it was never seen again after that. Until a few months ago when it appeared on eBay. Oof. <laughs> yes. Um, Steve Jerry saw it on eBay. He contacted the person who was selling it, who lives in Claremont, who found it at an auction in Maine. He bought it, and he was offering to sell it to the Historical Society or the Heritage Commission for $899. He said, ma'am, okay, that's too much money for a portrait for something. We don't have anywhere to put it, the Historical Society, we don't have room. And then I was sitting upstairs or downstairs talking when Paul came out and said, Anita, I just heard what you're talking about. You're in the Heritage Commission. The Heritage Commission has money. So 
Steve and Rick Price talked to the guy over in um, Claremont, and he offered to give it to us for what he paid for it, which was $400. The Heritage Commission has purchased the portrait, and it is sitting out here in the hall right now. Pardon? Was it? Has it been a repair? Was it repaired? It was repaired okay. at the museum before yeah. it disappeared. What happened to it after it left the museum, we don't know. And I his eyes follow I have some sneaking suspicions. <laughs> they do follow you. Back, <laughs> it was in my office for a Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, it I'll is wanna, here. Pardon? How long ago did it go down to the museum when it got stolen? The 1930s, late 30s. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and I know who took it to the museum. And I have suspicions as to how it got to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> I won't make that public. But at any rate, it's back in Merrimack, and it is a beautiful portrait, and it's hanging on the wall out here. Now, we moved the one of um, Daniel, Webster. Daniel Webster to make room for that, because Daniel Webster is not from Merrimack, and John Wheeler is. So when I talked to Nick, he suggested we put it there and move Daniel Webster over as a holding spot for something else for Merrimack in the future. What we'll do with Daniel Webster, I don't know, but he wasn't from Merrimack. <laughs> so, um, I guess that's about it. We don't have any other major plans for the future. Our, I am still the chairman of the Heritage Commission, and we are having meetings and we're doing things. It is my anticipation in another year to step down as the chairman and remain on the commission. I have issues of my own that are making it difficult, but the fact that the Historical Commission, the Heritage Commission and the Historical Society work together because I've been a connection between them is really a good idea. And the new president of the Historical Society tells me he's going to apply for membership on the Heritage Commission. <coughs> so. Who is the president now? Hmm? Mark Nozell. Mark Nozell. And the vice president is John Lestoka. So we have people that care about our town. And after looking for volunteer help for the Historical Society for ages, all of a sudden they have come forward when I said, on June 7th, I'm done. So it helps to quit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still there. I'm still the only one that's there on the one day a week we're open. I will continue to be there and doing research. Our new, I guess you call it new, weekly newspaper, the, the Sunday special. I write an article every month for that. The new one, by the way, that was mailed into them or emailed in this morning is about the Boston Co Post cane, which nobody holds right now. Right. It seems that our last holder died in December and they have not found a new one yet. So I have to word the, the, the article differently from them the way I originally did because I had hoped to have a name for it, but I didn't. Do you have any questions? <coughs> Thank you very much for the work you're doing. Okay, you're very Finley. welcome. I enjoy it. Ben Lee, did you? The Boston Post, Boston Pardon? Post came actually came up missing for a long time as well. Pardon? The Boston Post came actually came up missing for a long time as well. Oh yes, it was missing what from 1951 to something. Came back in 96. Yeah, it was many I, years I, that it was missing. 96, 97. And then it arrived anonymously in the mail. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, back at the 250th anniversary. That's why I remember the year. Yeah. But, Anyhow, I, actually, all I wanted to say is, um, you know, it was a good move for you to step down only because you got more people activated, apparently, but it's disappointing because Anita is one of the hardest working people you'll ever know. And uh, it was, uh, I mean, I, re I never had walked Old Kings Highway. I knew about it. I knew where it was located by map and so on and crossing of roads, but I'd never walked it. And I walked a portion of it yep. with the committee about a year ago now, I'd say. Yeah. And it was really kind of interesting uh, just to see this and your mind can run and you know think of all kinds of stuff but any may not be able to trace all of it because it did go across Thornton's Ferry but from the place where we absolutely know where it ended you know where we've been able to trace it so far 
It's all housing developments that have all changed hands and we haven't been able to trace the exact location all the way. But yeah. we're over to Natticook Road and a little past Natticook Road that we've walked it. We're going to see what else we can do. Yeah. Chip Pollard is really into the Old Kings Highway and he's the <laughs> one yes, that's doing is. all that's the great. research. But I, just, I wanted to thank Anita and I'm glad you're still continuing, uh, but thank you for everything you've done uh, for the town's history and preserving it and making it be known. I'll still be around. Good, good. <laughs> Not that we're trying to get rid of you, but we're really ha <laughs> no. happy to have you here. Bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and Anita, thank you very much for everything you've done, especially your involvement with the Boy Scouts as well. I, your, your energy continues to amaze me, so thank you so much for everything you've done. I, I guess the one thing that I personally would like to see is there's no reason why Mr. Wheeler's portrait should, should hang out here. I'd love to see it. we got plenty of room in here to put Mr. Wheeler's painting. I think it'd be more befitting Nick for... Nick said no. Why did Nick say no? Yes. Yeah. He doesn't want things distracting. And he was concerned that Mr. Wheeler was a minister and he didn't want anything of religious things up. But he's well, not a minister. He was never a minister. Yeah, well, okay. And he didn't give it to be a church. He gave it to be a community building. Right. <clears throat> but Mick did not want it in here. Well. <laughs> Reflection. Lon? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank my you. Uh, my sentiments uh, re are reflected by some of the comments already. <laughs> but Anita, I have to tell you, you've taught an old man how to get busy. Thank you. <laughs> you know, about 20 minutes ago, my Boy Scout meeting started, so I have to go change. Go. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anita. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Just another thing to do. <laughs> Is, is there anybody here on the Comcast um, or the I'm sorry the adult community center agreement or do we just do that amongst ourselves no um, it's yeah, been uh, it's it's been moved around a little bit uh, from meeting to meeting because um, first we wanted to add the, th the things that um, what is the name? Steve Steve, Steve Danbo asked for so those have been included in there um, and um, and then we forgot to put it on the agenda so it's okay. just in I've front of you with incorporating those things in there and I ask that you would all right pass we'll, it. we'll work our way down I was just going to jump to committee appointments if if there's no um, objections well we we haven't done legislative updates well, I know I'm asking if we can pull the committee appointments up okay to now that's fine if that's okay with with the uh, okay with the council <coughs> so I see Ben here is um, Tracy or Nelson Nelson's not here Tracy's here and Patrick Dwyer are not here so Tracy and Ben we have to take a vote mr. chairman I sure is it a, no it's a it's committee just, uh, oh okay I'm sorry yes we're gonna move it forward let's go through and accept the committee appointments before I swear anybody in Thanks. No. You're welcome. Um, so we have uh, four people up for appointments, reappointments, two committees that, uh, and we had discussions with Patrick and Nelson for uh, zoning board and uh, planning board, um, and uh, also with Ben Niles. We can do them all at once, or we can do them separately if people feel like we should. I'm looking for a motion. Second. Okay, so the committee appointments are for Tracy McGraw for Parks and Rec Committee as a full member, Nelson Disco for Planning Board as an alternate member, Patrick Dwyer for Zoning Board as a full member, and Ben Niles for Zoning Board of Adjustment as an alternate member. Any discussions? Bill. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First off, Tracy, thank you again for serving. Parks and Rec continues to be very robust in terms of their involvement with uh, programming and maintain the quality of life for not just our kids, but for our adults in the community. So thank you for your continued willingness to serve. I appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> Tom and I, to, for the benefit of our colleagues, had the opportunity, along with Patrick Dwyer, to interview uh, Ben Niles. And um, his his vitae was, quite honestly, was, was very impressive. 
Uh, Ben's background is in housing finance, which I thought was, was very interesting. I think it brings a unique perspective to the, the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, and obviously with that particular background, I, I for me personally, I felt that um, even though this is his first time stepping up to serving on a committee such as this, I really felt that he could hit the ground running and, and learning uh, what the ZBA does, understanding the, uh, the, the four-prong approach to making decisions and actually, uh, if called upon to serve, being able to um, act in a judicious manner. And, um, and I want to thank uh, Mr. Niles for, for volunteering and willing to serve on the, the Zoning Board of Adjustment because I, like, I think, like all of us, you know, and I've said this before, and I don't mean this to be redundant, I think it's a very difficult board to serve on and you, you, you tick off 50% of the people there and sometimes you please the other 50%, so it can be, be thankless at times. So I certainly want to thank him. And then, and then obviously Nelson and Patrick don't need much of an introduction. Uh, Patrick continues to serve as a chair, I think it's going to be for one more year. And um, certainly has appreciated his leadership on the board. And Nelson is Nelson, like Anita Krieger, we got Nelson Disco who continues to be um, ageless in, in his uh, time and dedication to helping Merrimack uh, plan for its, uh, the, the growth that we're experiencing. So I certainly want to thank all of them. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any other comments? Thank you very much to all of you. Um, I'll call for a vote on the appointments of Tracy, Nelson, Patrick, and Ben to their respective committees. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? That passes 7-0-0. So Tracy and Ben, if you can come over here. Tracy McGraw, do solemnly, do solemnly swear and sincerely swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as a full member of the Parks and Recreations Committee and as an alternative member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment according to the best of my abilities agreeable to the rules and regulations of this Constitution and, and laws, the laws of the, of the state, state of New, New Hampshire, Hampshire, so help me so God.
Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Okay. While I'm trying to organize myself, can we go back to, uh, was it, did I skip? We have no public hearing. We have legislative updates from state reps. Hello and welcome. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Nancy Murphy, 20 Brenda Lane, um, state rep. Just uh, wanted to update on a couple of things. Um, I'll start off probably with the, um, I attended the Drinking Water Ground Trust Fund meeting um, where uh, MVD came to request funding for uh, PFAS filtration for all the wells and um, we were well represented uh, by uh, Dawn and, and uh, Barbara attended and I myself and uh, Wendy Thomas um, and f um, I, I, I provided written testimony and I, I understand that at the end Barbara and Wendy were able to, to speak. I left just before the end to attend the other meeting which was being held at the exact same time in the same building which was um, DES's um, uh, public information uh, meeting about the proposed MCLs and that was just downstairs so um, I attended that one as well they were the same day so I think it was July 8th it was a, a busy DES day um, so I'm hopeful that um, the MVD will have some good news uh, maybe about some grants and loans hopefully um, I think they were very smart to get on it when they did I know um, today in discussions with um, Clark uh, Frizy at, at DES um, there, you know, people have been encouraged to apply for these loans. I'm sure now that there's been a change that there'll be a lot of people applying for those. And Merrimack was certainly smart to get in right at the very beginning. Um, and I think that will um, will help us. Um, so that being said, that was the uh, Drinking Water Ground uh, Water Trust Fund. Um, on Monday night, I attended the MBD meeting. Um, and it's um, the, um, it looks like the filtration uh, solutions it's going to be like 24 to 26 months out before this is is really happening and I uh, it seems that the challenge is the of uh, the masons who are required to do the parts of the building the actual the building that will house the filtration stuff that's the the hold up and um, I guess they're all busy it's good and that's about a four month wait um, so that's what slowed down uh, things a bit and um, um, the other uh, thing that that happened today was um, it's a great day in New Hampshire today um, was the meeting uh, this morning at nine o'clock uh, the gel car uh, committee met at the State House in the, L in the LOB and there were a number of us in attendance um, and that was to look at uh, and listen to DES proposed um, the lowered PFAS MCLs uh, which ranged in between 11 and 18 for uh, those four um, uh, PFAS substances um, that they were t attempting to regulate. And um, we are very fortunate that um, those that rulemaking was approved. Um, and we now have some of the strictest PFAS MCLs in the nation, um, far stricter than our federal guidelines. Which brings me to the next point, which is given that we have this good news. It also um, changes things for our state and specifically our town as we've been sort of ground zero for a lot of the um, the interest and, and in terms of exposure, we certainly are, are um, probably higher than, uh, than other places. Um, I'm wondering if for citizens who are gonna read about this and hear about this and they're gonna see it in the, I mean, we're on national news, it's, it's pretty, today is a, is a big day. Um, I think that it would be helpful, and I, and I would ask you to consider uh, maybe asking DES to come to our town and do another um, sort of a community meeting, an informational meeting, because up to now, um, you know, we've followed federal guidelines. We right now are in a different position than much of the nation, um, and people are going to be wondering, okay, what does this mean to us? Because let's face it, our MBD water um, has been at times over the, what our new regulations are um, and I think there may be a lot of questions as a matter of fact I know there are already a lot of questions about what does that mean how are we going to deal with this what are DES's um, 
the recommendations? Um, what are the guidelines that they would suggest? Um, and I think it just makes sense to have it come from the agency itself. Um, I mean, I think we've done a good job about PFAS fairs and stuff, but since this is a big change, I think that would be the place um, maybe to, to have something like, something like that. The other thing that I think would be helpful at that meeting, uh, because people are starting to ask a lot of questions uh, now about biosolids, and I mean, I know there's been a lot of things happening sort of outside of the purview necessarily of people that may not have been aware that that's an issue. But if we could have maybe Sarita um, and you know, DPW come and be maybe part of the same meeting just to provide information to the public, informational thing about transparency, what's been happening, why it's been happening, and how this all fits together so that when people, you know, looking at their water bills or they're wondering what, what's, why do we have a different limit than the federal guidelines, um, Certainly, um, you know. I mean, I think I think people know that it's based on science. That it is um, based on uh, health protections for the most vulnerable uh, uh, of our population: uh, pregnant women, young children. Um, but I think having those agencies and those those <coughs> people come and provide um, that input would would be the place rather than see it on Facebook. Rather than have people trying to to explain things, I think. If we all hear the same thing um, and and not and provide the uh, the um, community an opportunity, I don't. I think it would be helpful. So that would be um, my request. So, thank you. Bill, did you have a question? Well, uh, thank you, Representative. I, I appreciate you coming tonight and providing the uh, the information and the update. The concern that I have about having a meeting is that. The village district, the voters in the village district have voted for filtration for their wells, which is going to bring, potentially, at some particular point, going to bring them down to non-detect. The MCLs can go up and down like a roller coaster, and at the end of the day, we're still going to have filters that are providing water at close to non-detect if non-detect. So I'm not sure why we would want to have DES come to town to talk about these new particular levels when the voters of this community, along with the leadership at MVD, have committed to providing filtration that really renders those M MCLs, for the lack of a better word, impotent. So I'm just trying to understand the, the Sarita point. I get, I, I and, you know, because we are, we <clears throat> we are receiving. It's not like you know we're receiving from other towns. We're providing a service to those other towns to process their biosolids. So and for, our own and, and our own. So from that context, I don't necessarily disagree with, but having DES provide an updated information little session as it relates to what came out of came out of JL car I I slightly find onerous only because of what the community has committed to do as it relates to its own drinking water so I'd appreciate any I would I would say um, that I think it's important that given that we, I mean I, I think we all know that that we're certainly moving towards the best filtration system we can possibly put into to limit our exposure to PFAS but we're talking two years down the road and and with the limits that are set now, MVD will be above those limits in, 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 in varying times. So I think that's why it's important, I think, to clarify for people exactly what that means and, and have it not be us Merrimack citizens for clean water being asked or state reps or phone calls to the MVD or s social media. I just think it's, it's, we have an opportunity to provide things in a professional way, to have citizens' questions answered. I mean, it's certainly, um, um, I, I think there's a information that, you know, people are going to want to know from, from DES. Are you going to be supplying water? I mean, people have asked us, is DES going to be supplying water, supplying water because we're over that those current MCLs. So also to explain things like, like what does this mean? Yes, we have these these new MCLs that are set, but but it's I think I think October is the date when the first testing of that it's going to be quarterly testing. That's the kind of information that people don't necessarily have. That there will be there will be water systems out of compliance, maybe even the MVD. Um, and but what what does that mean? And I I think coming from DES, it makes more sense to have those people in the room than to have us supplying the answers as best we can. Um, you know, based on I, I um, you know, I, I just I think it it makes the most sense to have the the most appropriate players um, 
provide that information in a place where everybody hears the same thing and you, you, we know how that works. Fair enough. Yeah. Peter? Yes. Uh, Nancy, thanks yeah. for being here. Oh, sure. It's great. The updates we're getting from the reps are awesome. Um, and thank you for your hard work. I'm glad to hear you talk about biosolids and bringing Sarita in because I got to tell you, I'm, we're making great progress and all the, the f folks um, from the Water Alliance and everything are doing great work. But I, I'm concerned that if we, if we keep moving too fast, especially with biosolids, um, and, and it's a concern and you want to clean it up, but if, what I'm worried about is the impact on the community itself and our wastewater, our waste treatment plant and the costs and everything. I mean, as you're aware, we just, um, you know, this past year uh, voted on bonds for the next 12 years to work on and upgrade the system. And it would kind of be um, a kick in the butt maybe if we we're halfway through this and then because of changes in regulations, now filtrations and everything else, I mean, I, I don't know all the technical aspects of it, but now all of a sudden we're getting whacked with a million dollar bill um, to get some of this out there and to clarify. Um, is it, should it be the people that are contributing the waste to us that should be, so that there's, um, that should be um, penalized or required to filter it as opposed to the town? So there's so many questions about this and I'm worried that, you know, we, if we move too quickly, maybe we should <coughs> pump the brakes and, and really get a good grip on what it's gonna cost. Not all the communities that have wastewater. Um, so, I mean, I'm glad to hear. I think Sarita's a great resource, and I, I hope the legislators uh, use her. I th I, exactly, and I think that having Sarita available to explain, I, th I don't think a lot of people were aware of what's happened, what all that money's been spent for, what the purpose of it is, what we're trying to avoid here in Merrimack, um, the actions that are being taken to minimize risk and to, to save cost. I think w that's one of the important things, um, huge for me. Um, I mean, we all pay taxes in this town. We all pay water bills. We, um, and but we all know that we need a clean environment. We need yeah. safe drinking water for our children. And I think um, there's enough concern about health impacts that people recognize that the right thing to do was to filter our water. And so today, with with these these lower uh, PFAS MCLs, we're another step there. I think a huge step, and I certainly have voiced this to DES and to the legislature and everybody that will listen, that um, we don't really have a choice. We need to do the right thing. However, we didn't ask for this. We didn't cause this. We didn't create this. We are victims of this. And we are victims that are paying to fix this, which we should not be. Um, however, without regulations, we couldn't do anything about that. Our hands were tied. So we have that now. So I have asked DES, um, and I will continue to ask the governor and hopefully bring maybe some legislation forward that um, I know we have t lawsuits um, that have been brought forward to in terms of the, um, the manufacturers uh, and the distributors of PFAS. However, we still have, within our very own community, a contributor of PFAS, an industrial polluter that continues to put PFAS into our community every day in the air. So we can clean up, but we're cleaning up and cleaning up and cleaning up while they continue to pollute. And that's not right. So we need our towns, we need our state to sue those responsible and pay for the damage that they've caused, the harm that they've caused, so that we don't have to continue footing the bill for their business practices. Um, and I, I think that's going to go a long way. I think people are frustrated, and rightfully so. I think we all are as citizens, that we're paying for something we didn't do. Um, and that speaks to, you know, biosolids or whatever. That, that, but it's one of those things that you can't not do something because of the cost when the, when the lifelong impact to human health and our children and generations of families in this town um, have been at risk and continue to be at risk. So I would hope that um, you know our town looks at um, you know litigation, that our state looks at litigation specifically, um, and that DES use this time now to determine the responsible parties so that litigation can can go forward. Because without an identification of specifically who is responsible, I, I recognize that can't happen. But I think that is, well, is, is time um, uh, well invested. And I think that's, um, you know, I, I certainly know it's going to take a while, but uh, you know, I think our Merrimack 
deserves that. Um, taxpayers, water payers, um, our, our residents. You know, our, it's cost us both in, in terms of finances and it's cost us in terms of our health. And it's time for it to stop. So, okay, Eileen. Yes. Um, I just think that people should, because I'm not a lawyer either, but um, I think people should take a very close look at the consent decree that was signed by the state of New Hampshire because they have put a boundary um, beyond which St. Gobain is no longer responsible. They've signed off on it, the, the um, ability for the state of New Hampshire to sue beyond that limit. And so, I, as I said, I, they, it needs to be looked at because the, si the state has already settled with St. Gobain and has promised that they will not sue them any further except under certain c conditions. Right, and I think that was part of, from my understanding, and again, I'm not a lawyer and I don't have the consent decree, but um, that was, we were, we were concerned on two things, on the agreement the MBD made with um, St. Gobain and the agreement um, between the, the state and, and St. Gobain. To my understanding, that, um, that there was room for um, uh, further, uh, um, what's the word, negotiation, Deter to be determined based upon findings that were not a, a, a known at that time. Um, you know, I don't know. Again, that that's certainly something that that DES. I mean, you know, to I can't imagine signing an agreement that um, you know that would absolve responsible parties for problems not yet determined to be attributable to them. So, you, you know, you, I know you should. The the agreement is online, yeah. and there are releases without prejudice. Um, for St. Gobain outside a certain boundary. So there is a finite area. Uh, there's an inner area that's movable, and then there's an outer finite limit where, whereby St. Gobain has, for all intents and purposes, been absolved of responsibility. You just, I'll, I'll send yep. you a copy of yep. it. You need to look I'm, at it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Annie. Which is, you know, to uh, we can learn a lot by uh, making appropriate agreements with uh, with polluters. So, thank you. I'll, I, I will look. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Barb. Barb. Getting back to the question of the sludge and the wastewater treatment plant. Um, late last week, the Pappas bill went through. So right now, um, Sarita and the crew down at the wastewater treatment plant are in looking at how that affects them as well. So right now, things are a little bit in flux as far as they're concerned because there's some question on the extent of what that bill uh, mandates. So I would beg your indulgence while they have try to figure all of that out before we actually bring that to the f front so that people understand what's happening to it. But there have been a lot of efforts going on by that staff to um, begin to bring that, those levels down. And I believe Sarita had told us that we're now under mains. We would qualify to sell compost in Maine, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's you know how much work they have actually done in the last couple of months in preparation, knowing that these bills were out there. Yeah. And, that's, and that's all good information for the community to yeah. have. I mean, people. <coughs> The more people have seen the devil we know, mm -hmm. the more they hear, the more they read, the more informed they become, mm -hmm. and the more questions they have. And I think, you know, when, when, what does this have to do with sludge? Or what do you mean, <laughs> what's that wastewater? Well, I thought it was talking about drinking water. I think that's why it's so important. They, people don't know right. what Sarita has been doing and what, you know, what the wastewater. You know, it's like a whole continuum yes. of, of care. Yeah, and I think that would and, be a great presentation yeah. for people to understand how everything's interconnected and related and right. why why it's such a big deal mm -hmm. to fix because so many things are impacted. Right, it's not only what you're drinking in, right. it's also what happens on the backside of all of that. Right. Literally. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. you. Went there. Thank you. Excuse me? No. no.
Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, is there any chance that we could go out of order? I see yeah. Lieutenant Marcotte's here, and I think his presentation is going to be fairly brief. Because I get a feeling that a couple of the other topics might extend out a little longer. I Hopefully not. I think you're correct. I, I have no problem. Does anybody in the committee and the council have an issue with uh, bringing nope. four and five forward? Nope. Moving, moving to item four under new business. Um, it's a donation of uh, $1,375.75 raised from the Merrimack Crime Line Magic Show to benefit Merrimack Police Department Canine Program. <coughs> Lieutenant. I had to make sure it was on. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> the green light means it's on, so I got it's it. It's always a moment, <laughs> Uh So, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the council, town manager, Kavanaugh. Uh, so, the agenda request before the town council is to accept the donation of $1,375.75 raised by the Merrimack Crime Line uh, Magic Show, benefiting the Merrimack uh, Police Department Canine Program. Uh, so the magic show was held on April 13th of this year, uh, and the money uh, is used to care for our canine program throughout the year. Um, so since 2009, the Merrimack Crime Line has actually raised over $27,000 um, for the Merrimack Police Department canine program, which is extraordinary. Um, so we're very fortunate to have such a great organization as the Merrimack Crime Line, a good, the support from them, and uh, the partnership we've actually built with them over the years, so we really appreciate uh, all their hard work. Uh, before you, yeah, before you go on, I'm going to embarrass myself oh, by I'm saying sorry. that I haven't met you directly, and so if you I would introduce yourself. I guess that's the polite yourself. thing to do, right? <laughs> I, I'm not Deputy <coughs> Chief Levesque. I was going to say that. I have more tell. hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> A little shorter. <laughs> um, don't tell him I said This is on TV. No, so I, I am, see that. That's you know. okay. <laughs> He'll appreciate it. Um, so, what's that? He knows how much hair and how much hair and how much he doesn't have. How much <laughs> yes. He has and does not have. You know what they say about payback, though. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I am my, uh, Michael Mark. I'm a lieutenant with the Merrimack Police Department right now in charge of uh, patrol. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I might go backwards. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, thank you. So, um, were there any questions on this donation? Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion to approve. Anybody second? second? I, I saw Finley raise his hand ahead of you, so we'll give it to him. With thanks. Again second by Finley. Um, yeah. With thanks with, to the. With thanks to the crime line for supporting line. the K nine program. Obviously. Again. Uh, if there's no other comments, I'll move the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, that passes seven zero zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you have another one. Yes. Number five? Okay. <laughs> uh, so the next request um, before the council tonight is to accept a donation of $924 from the Merrimack Rotary um, Club to purchase 12 lithium pow uh, polymer batteries, which are $77 a piece, uh, for our secondary portable radios. Uh, so in case you don't know, these radios are distributed to various town buildings throughout the town, courthouses, the schools, town hall here. Um, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> That's it's why close. I'm here. <laughs> um, so they're used to, uh, to communicate in the case of an emergency. Uh, the portables are also utilized by vol the volunteers when they're assisting with the uh, assisting the police department. Portables are stored in a recharging pack, which is kept in dispatch. Um, so I, the issue with the old batteries is. Um, the ones that we cur currently utilize, they're not effectively charging. Um, so they're fa failing to hold a charge, which is obviously creating an issue and it's making them inoperable. Um, so the old batteries would be discarded properly and um, until we can, they can be replaced. Okay, about how old are the batteries? Do you have any idea? I do not have an idea okay. of how old the, the old ones are. And we have 12 of these? It seems like batteries are on our agenda annually, so. I <laughs> yeah, so these, right, I guess we had a, a budget item in the past, I think, from, however, um, so this right now, this money is gonna complete 
it's uh, a donation. Our, our replacement program. Yeah. Right. Our goal. That's awesome. Does anybody else have any questions on battery replacements, donations from the Rotary Club? <coughs> So we're looking for a motion to move authorize. approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. A motion made by Bill and seconded by Peter to accept the donation of $924 from the Merrimack Rotary Club for the purchase of 12 lithium polymer batteries to replace aging batteries. Seeing no further questions or comments, I'll call the question. All Thanks to the Rotary Club for Thanks. their Thank continual support of programs here in Merrimack. Absolutely. I'll call the question. Any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? <coughs> that passes 700 as well. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thanks much for adjusting. Much. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Take care. I'll be looking for that radio. You will? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll give you one of the old batteries. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Moving back into line with our agenda. Town manager's report. Uh, the town manager's report. Thanks. Okay. Um, so um, the police department, um, under the recommendation of Officer Hart and Officer Manuelli, have, decide, have uh, put together a program to uh, bridge the gap between um, the police department and foster children. Uh, so um, wonderful initiative that they've put together and I'm just gonna read this to you. So uh, in an e effort to bridge the gap <laughs> between police and children and foster care, the Merrimack Police Department will begin the Foster Friends Initiative. This will, will consist of meetings in the function area of the police station. These meetings will allow for foster parents to connect, um, network, and build a strong community. These meeting, during these meetings, the children will be given the opportunity um, to build relationships with officers through various activities. Uh, children in care typically have negative um, interactions with the police, and this will hopefully create positive relationships and memories. The first meeting is scheduled for August 10th at 3 p.m. at the Merrimack PD. Any questions um, or to express interest in attending, please contact Officer Hart at um, the Merrimack PD. Um, again, wonderful initiative as usual from the police department to reach um, out to the community and the youth. Um, so uh, I received a letter today from um, the representative from the um, FBI National Academy Associates New, New England Chapter Youth Leadership Training Program that was held in, in um, Frank, this, this was held in Franklin, Mass. during the week of June 24th through the 28th. Um, and many thanks to Chief Roy and Officer Amanda Groves for playing an important role in, um, in this um, effort. Uh, it's a week-long training event for 30 kids from throughout New England that provides a unique leadership experience. So another kudos to um, Chief Roy and Amanda, uh, Officer Amanda Groves. Thank you. Great. Are there any questions for the town manager on her report? No, but if you could, um, on, on behalf of myself, um, commend Officers Hart and Manuelli. That's a great program. And the PD continues to reach out and, and embrace that community policing philosophy, process and philosophy that they have for years. And when I when I heard about this program, I I thought what a what a great target audience. Some of these kids feel disenfranchised as life goes on. So I think that's great. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Moving into old business. Um, First on is the John O'Leary Adele Community Center Agreement, which was tabled during the June 13th and June 27th Town Council meetings, submitted by Town Manager Eileen Cabanel, the Town Council to consider renewing their lease agreement with the John O'Leary Adult Community Center. Motion to take off the table. Second. Seconded by Barbara. Uh, motion made by Bill Boyd. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Abstaining? That passes 7-0-0. Thank you, Bill. Um, Eileen, do you want to 
take this one? Yeah, I, as I had said, this is a, um, an agreement between the town and the, um, the uh, leadership of the adult community center. Um, it's already been reviewed by the council at um, two previous meetings ago, and um, we have revised it to include um, the information or the um, services that the um, the person who, who um, Steve Denbo um, has been included in here, and Paul has met with them to make sure that that language is um, what they're looking for, and it is. So I recommend that you approve this, please. Three-year Three deal. Nancy? As a uh, council rep, the O'Leary group, I just want to thank you. I appreciate the additions that have been requested and incorporated in here. Uh, I noted that in the minutes, Barbara, you had made a comment about the garden club, and they've already contacted them, because I thought of that a while ago, too. But again, and I also talked to them about um, the girls' club and the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts and having them as well, and any, you know, to contact them, which they had done. So I think they've attempted to do a lot of things on their own, but I think these additions are appropriate in terms of the town responsibilities, and I appreciate their additions. Anybody else have any comments? We have a motion to accept the agreement. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Town Council accept the agreement with the John O'Leary Adult Community Center. Uh, agreement effective for a three-year period beginning on July 1st, 2019 and ending on June 30th, 2022. Second. And the town managers can sign for it. And uh, furthermore, that the town manager or her authorized representative be authorized to sign the agreement. Daring to be different tonight. <laughs> Any other comments or questions on the call for a vote? All those in favor of the renewing the lease agreement as identified in the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Seven zero zero. Thank you very much. Item number two, the town council to discuss and consider the renewal of the proposed cable television franchise agreement brought by Nicholas Lavalley. Speaking of. Good evening. Hi there. Good evening. Could I have a moment to speak about Anita's comments made earlier? Or? About Anita's comments? Anita Craiger's comments. Sure. Uh, she's just she's talking about the portraits. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, she just made a comment where it was two very different points of conversation that I had with Anita. I was, we had a candid conversation and I wanted to just know, I was curious to know. Uh, can, can I just say, I, I don't think that's okay. necessarily appropriate for here. All right. But thank you. We'll, At we'll, some point, if we'll I talk can about talk about, about yeah. that, we'll that'd talk be great. Not here, though. Thank okay. you. We're going to talk about the franchise agreement now. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, what you should have in your backup material is the proposed uh, franchise agreement. Um, we began discussing this 11 months ago. Uh, we've had two discussions before the council. We had a public hearing. Uh, we uh, formed an ad hoc committee to further explore what um, possibilities we could have in a renewal with a, a, a cable company. Um, and what you have before you is a proposed franchise agreement. Uh, that has been reviewed by legal and has been reviewed by Comcast. Um, and uh, within that agreement are several positive changes um, that were suggested by this council, myself and this staff, um, and uh, some residents as well. Um, those uh, include an extension of service availability um, uh, to retain a customer service office in a neighboring uh, community. And there's also a side letter for a senior citizen discount and an uh, HD channel, town channel, as well. Um, the document is only relative to traditional cable TV services, um, and any other cable operator is um, welcome to do business within the town of Merrimack. Uh, this is a 10-year agreement, and it's uh, simply pending your own review and uh, the town manager's signature. The town council is the franchising authority. 
Okay. Yes. So it's 10 years, it's TV only, and it's non-exclusive. Correct. Okay. Any other questions, Barbara? So how would a senior citizen in the town of Merrimack go about getting the senior discount? Um, you should have the side letter attached as well. Yeah. Um, there is a, a, a few different uh, qualifications. Okay. I don't have the side letter in front of me. There is a few different qualifications, age obviously being one. So they would talk directly to Comcast about that? Correct. Okay. Nick, is there any chance we can get that those instructions posted so that senior citizens can see them? I don't know, web, the website is maybe on, on the cable channel. Ab absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's where I was going to go. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so are they just these three items that are that they need to do? Proof of age, he head of household, and receiving Social Security and Medicare benefits under Social Security? Yep. So if they have to be receiving Social Security to get the discount? As stated in the side letter, yeah. Okay, well, I think that's important that we try to make that clear to, to people, so I was trying to bring it out. Absolutely. That's, that seems... Uh, a little different than just a senior citizen discount, but fine. Any other comments, Finley? I was just <clears throat> well, we have little so little control over any of this; it's almost moot. But um, at one point, I thought we had talked about shortening the length of the contract. I can't remember why it was a good idea or otherwise. Um, but I know they've always been ten. Uh, does it have to be? Is there is there a plus for not making it ten? We we did discuss that. Um, I, I I think we actually went over that at the public hearing. And the reason we saw um, the benefit to having a ten year agreement is that we really don't know what can change on a on a federal level. Um, and uh, this gives having a, a ten year agreement actually gives the town a bit more protection. So if there are to be changes on a federal level, maybe having such an extended contract is a good thing. I see it as a positive thing. Thank you. Eileen. I hate to ask this off the cuff, Paul, because I forgot to ask you this, but um, can you give, it a, give us a um, sense of how much we receive from the cable franchise um, fees annually? We receive just under $400,000 a year right now. And that's at a 3.5? 3.75. 3 3.75. So it's just under 400, so I'm 396. <coughs> and has the rate changed? Uh, the franchise rate has not changed. It's similar to has what's the amount of money on. coming in changed? It fluctuates. Um, we were as high as $415,000 about three years ago, <coughs> and now we're around 396 again. Okay. Nancy. But I think uh, one of the things that you've brought this up, Nick, before, is that there is a flex going on related to cable. Remember, we only do the television. Correct. The internet is not part of this. So that is increasing as the cost is, uh, but the use of the cable uh, for TV is going. So that amount is certainly going to probably be altered in the future. In a downward projection. In theory, it, it could be lower. And as far for bundled services, you're seeing less revenue from the cable TV portion of the bill in a bundled service as opposed to internet. Bill? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When we had this presentation 11 months ago, I had raised the issue of going from quarterly payments to monthly payments. And on Page 23 under Article 8, Section C, I see that we're still doing quarterly payments, and I'd like to know what was the rationale for not moving to monthly payments in light of the fact that we collect close to $400,000 a year. My argument being they're collecting interest off of our money. Understood. I, I wish I had an answer for you. I wish I had an answer for you. I, I, that's something I'd have to look at. Um, I guess the I, second I, question is, was it, was it brought up in the context of conversation from the time that I raised the issue to this point now? I, I, I don't quite recall if that was brought up at, at any, either of our meetings. Okay. Three meetings.
Finley. I think that's a good idea, Bill, but that's not why <laughs> that's not what I want to say. I was just curious. I see August 1st is our renewal date. Um, does this contract go from when it expired uh, to the January of 2029? You mean just Ju July 31st, 2020. Well, I thought it expired this past January. Oh, this past January, right? It did, yeah. So, so we're still in the we're still in that contract. So it's a month. Right, right. Month. I knew that. So this this contract will end in August of 2029. Right. Okay. Correct, July yeah. 31. Yeah. So we're just shifting the whole thing by 10, 10 years. Any other questions or comments? Is this a is this a fixed thing or is it uh, renegotiable or openable as far as? Maybe the question of payments on a on a monthly versus quarterly basis, or uh, if I'm not mistaken, we there is I, I think there is some language that we could change the percentage. We we can change the percentage of the franchise fee at any time. So perhaps um, you know that's something I could ask uh, legal c counsel to review if if how you know the frequency of how we're paid could change. That's something that I could bring up or revisit. Okay. I mean, it, it, it would be good to at least talk to them if we can about, you know, I mean, we're not talking 10 or $20. We're talking $100,000 right, a quarter, and, and that's a substantial <coughs> amount. If you could get it on a monthly basis, it would be better. Okay. Um, did you have another question, Finley? No, just I, they we don't have they have not agreed have they agreed to any of this or is this just for us right now and we're going to hand it off to them? No, they've agreed to it. They have agreed to this and our attorney has reviewed it well, to okay. make sure that we're not getting ourselves into legal quagmires we don't want to be in. So at this point it's just being offered to us to to accept it. Um, because I, I think Bill's got a very valid point there, and it's, it's not like I'm not going to worry so much I'm, about it, but it just. I'm, I'm trying not to be emotional about it, but I was very emphatic 11 months ago raising this particular issue, and, and, and I, I feel like it was ignored. Because now we're, 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 being, we're being asked to approve an agreement tonight that benefits everybody in this community, and what I felt was a salient point that I raised has not, at, at a minimum, been prepared to be answered tonight, and I and I don't feel I'm being unreasonable for being a little a, a little disappointed by this. But I the, the other flip of the coin is, you know, I'm looking at an August 1st date, and here we are. It's July 18th. We're not coming back until till August August 15th, and. We're, we're, we're pushing out an agreement that has been in going on in, in continuance now for six months. It's and it's 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 not fair to the community. And, but I I also suspect though that it was not ignored. I think it was forgotten. I think it's it, more appropriate. Respectfully, the testimony that was presented tonight, they they have no notes that this was talked about. So that's how that that's how I feel. But I don't think it was ignored. I think it was forgotten. I don't can't imagine that purposely. Oh, okay, doing. Bill. That's Bill, to be honest, if I were to go back in my if I were to go back in my notes, it, it very well could have been something that's that was discussed. I just don't have that portion of our um, of our conversations Four, in front of me. Four hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money, and having a monthly revenue source allows our finance director to be able to to plan revenues. That's that's just how I look at it. And I don't mean to belabor the point, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Barbara had her oh, I'm so sorry. You don't I don't think it was ignored, Councilor Boyd. The fact of the matter is, is that it wasn't in the notes that probably Nick had as well. I reviewed the document even before it went to the lawyer against my notes, and you know I take some pretty good notes, and I had nothing about that. So there might have been some conversation about it, and there may have been a decision or whatever, but it didn't get into either of our notes. So it wasn't something that we intentionally, as an insult to you, did not include. It was just missed. So if you like, if you do, do you want to, I think the decision now is, do we accept it the way it is, or do we send it back to, have, to ask if Comcast can arrange to do a monthly billing 
versus a quarterly, which is probably their, s their s standard operating procedure. So I think that's the decision. We can beat ourselves up about well, that, what got missed or not, that's, that's, but that's, what's, what do we do going and forward? And respectfully, Council Healy, that's, that's, that's the point. I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with the fact, do, I, do we go back hat in hand to Comcast and say, oh, by the way, because that's really what it's going to look like. It's going to look like, oh, by the way. Eileen? There's, there's no hat in hand involved. Um, it's a simple question. Um, we go to them and say this is what we would prefer and if we if we get that then we'll move forward if not well you'll have to make other decisions you know so i don't think it's um i don't know that it's an unreasonable request at all so we can send it september 1st instead of august i i guess i'd like to hear from our finance uh director to see if you, Paul, if you can, I don't want to put you on the spot, I probably am. Um, just, are we looking at, I mean, what's the difference in money here? I, Bill makes a valid point, don't get me wrong, but what, what are we looking at as far as money-wise by the monthly payments versus the quarterly? If you give me one second. Okay, thank you. Councilor Albert, the point is, is that they're collecting interest on, off of us uh, I I totally recognize that I okay. agree with you okay um, but my point is now is the other point is we're coming up on August 1st yeah and I agree with you on that for thirty three thousand dollars at what we get because it'll be thirty three thousand dollars it's about eight hundred and twenty five dollars worth of interest for a full year that's if we went to monthly, monthly. we get eight hundred and twenty five dollars yes per yeah per month okay. or rough, if, for that yeah. About eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. um, just know that, yes, thirty-three thousand dollars is a lot of money, but we're operating in millions of dollars when we do our interest. So, eight hundred twenty-five dollars in our pocket, yes, is better than in the corporation's pocket. We'll so do whatever you want. So, my follow-up question then is, on this is, is it more of a headache to process this money coming in monthly for the finance department? as opposed to quarterly the only problem will be is that we'd be chasing I'm sorry we'd be chasing com we'll be chasing Comcast monthly. for the information monthly okay. to get get it in monthly yeah. with them they'll be they're roughly on a 45 day payment schedule so we'd be chasing them every month to say hey give us our money give us our money Eileen. Uh, and also, um, the information is based on something. So they have to do the calculations and they have to, you know, gather all the information um, to do it. And to do it every month might be a little bit difficult. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's pretty entailed worksheets that they give. It's like two to three pages of just information with accounts, new accounts, dropped accounts things of that sort. <coughs> it, I don't know how labor intensive it is at Comcast. I don't know. But uh, and so is, I guess, thank you, Paul and Eileen. I guess, Bill, I agree with you. You make a valid point, it, but I'm kind of thinking here, we've got August 1st. We're looking at, looking at $800 and change. Um, and then I'm looking at the labor or time from the finance department. I feel like it's a wash. And I, so I feel like we should move forward with the contract as written. That's one man's opinion. Any other comments? I'm looking for a motion to either, e either way to move forward. Mr. Chairman, I move that the town council approve the cable television franchise agreement for a period of 10 years. Commencing on August 1st, 2019, ending through July 31st, 2029. Furthermore, that the town manager or her proxy be authorized to sign the agreement to perfect the transaction. And could you just point out that it's a cable television? Cable television. Agreement? It's the cable television franchise agreement, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Second by Peter. Um, any other comments or questions? Yeah, I don't want to 
let my comments be misconstrued that I de have denigrated the work that's been done on this agreement, because 11 months is a long time and a lot of hard work. So I will publicly apologize to my colleagues and to staff tonight if my emotions were inflammatory in any way. I don't want that to be in reflective of the work that they've done in this agreement. So, and I look forward to approving it. Thank you. Thank you. Calling for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? That passes 700. We're all good, I think. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time Thank and you. energy. Thank you. And watching out for Merrimack. Brings us to uh, new business. The, and we've already done one, so we move to two. Parks and Rec Department uh, donation uh, brought by Matthew Kasparis. The town council to consider the acceptance and expenditure of a donation in the amount of $209.43 from Boy Scout Ethan Burns, which is surplus funds from the completion of his Eagle Scout project for the Parks and Rec for Wasserman Park, pursuant to RSA 32-95-B and Charter Article 8-15. So moved. Eileen, are you presenting this for Matthew? Or? Um, I think that you just told the whole I just story. Did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody made a motion. I did. So moved. Actually, Lon said it right before you did. So you oh. can you can take the second if that's all right. Counselor, from one board and right guy to another. Thank you. So moved by Lon Woods and seconded by <laughs> Peter Albert to. Uh, to accept the donation. Any other comments? Uh, seeing none, I'll call a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? Seven zero zero. Moving right along. Number three, if I can get there, a donation <coughs> um, submitted by Parks and Rec Director Matthew Kasparius. Town Council to consider the acceptance and expenditure of a donation in the amount of $1,350 from Merrimack Friends and Families to the Parks and Rec Department to be used towards the Natticook Day Camp Scholarship Fund pursuant to RSA 31 colon 95-B and Charter Article 815. So moved. Moved by Lon Woods. Second. And seconded by Nancy Harrington. One comment, Mr. Chair? Please. Um, again, Merrimack Friends and Family annually supporting uh, Natticook Day Camp. They're a wonderful organization. Another great organization for this town. Uh, thank you very much to those folks. Yeah, I really appreciate the work that they're doing myself. I was a member of the committee before, of the program before it was called Merrimack Friends and Family back when it was the Welcome Wagon Club or something like oh, that. Yeah. When I first moved to town back in the early 1990s. And uh, it, it's great to see that they're still an active organization and we very much appreciate all the work that they do. Uh, any other comments? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? 700. Zero, zero. That passes. Thank you very much. Which brings us all the way down to our investment policy, submitted by Finance Director and Assistant Town Manager Paul T. McCallie. Town Committee to review and consider the approval of the town's investment policy for the investment of public funds held by the town treasurer, who is not here tonight, in accordance with RSA 35 colon 9 and RSA 41 colon 29 for fiscal year 2019-20. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a housekeeping item. It comes before the town council every year. It basically gives the town treasurer direction from the town councilor of how to invest the funds for the town of Merrimack. We have very strict guidelines in the state telling us that we can only put it in money markets or savings accounts. So we're not investing in stocks and bonds and things of that sort. Um, but this is the town council um, needs to approve it. I do want to say one thing. This investment policy basically states what the treasurer can deposit into a bank without it being collateralized. I have made a determination that every dollar that is deposited into a bank account is 100% collateralized. So this is just in case there's a bank that we want to do some business with. It gives us 
some flexibility to do business, but I do, it's, I take it very, very responsible here in the town that this is fiduciary responsibility for the funds. We want 100% collateralized, so we're protected against um, if a bank does un unforeseen go out of business. I do want to say that the state statutes do not let us um, invest in credit unions, because that was always a question too. The state statutes will not let us invest in credit unions. We have to invest in a chartered bank with the state of New Hampshire or with the federal government, chartered bank by the federal government. Okay. Any questions? Are there any changes in this from no, past years? No, it's same. It's the only thing that might have been updated a little bit are the dates on it. Oh, <laughs> we can live with that. Okay. No, just a quick question, Paul. <clears throat> We have cash and securities, capital deposits, capital loans, all the minimums and the maximums. Is is that is that standard, or is is there uh, any type of policy or formulas that you use to arrive at those particular percentages? Yes, we uh, we use every bank has to fill out um, federal reporting to uh, on a quarterly basis, and if we're going to invest in a bank that's unsecured. We'll ask them to see their their 10K reporting, and they are formulas that go along with the cash and securities, what they have for loans, and it's all spelt out in their balance sheets. And we we do this with a bunch of formulas that we do have um, to figure out what these percentages are. But are There's these, a solid bank, whether it's a solid bank or are these or numbers not. standard accounting numbers, or are these numbers that you've come up with as a as a finance director? The 25% or the 0.75%? The, these, these, these are finance director numbers that we feel comfortable with that the bank is solvent. And these numbers have been in effect for longer than I've been a finance director here in the town. Right. When the banking industry was really insolvent, these numbers came out. And we've used them since then. And actually, it's a very strict policy. Sounds good. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. We need to have each of the town council members sign this. Do you have a perfected copy for signatures? Um, all those in favor of the investment need a motion, policy? Mr. Chairman. I thought we had one, sorry. We need a motion to accept the investment policy. I move approval of the town investment policy. You moved approval? I'm sorry. I, I did, did, yes. I'll move okay. Approval. Motion made by Finley. Second. Seconded by Peter. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? That passes 700. Thank you. Please remember we need to sign it. It's coming by. Which brings us to the next page. Minutes. minutes from the June 27th meeting 2019 anybody would like to make a motion to approve or mr. chairman or? mr. chairman I move the town council meeting minutes of Thursday June 27 2019 with a couple of quibbles on page 6 between lines 43 and 44, could we have some spacing, please? And the same goes for page 11, line 35 and 36. And I defer to Council Healy for anything that I missed. Thank you. You are. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else have any other corrections or additions or changes? I have a motion to accept the, the minutes of June 27th, 2019. Do we have a second? Seconded by Barbara. 
Thank you, Councillor Barbara Healy. Um, if there's no other changes or, or comments, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? That passes 7-0-0. Comments from the press and or the public? Comments from the council? Mr. Chair, actually, uh, I'm not, I have on the back of my agenda packet. That's just, that's just a FYI? Yeah. Okay, I was questioning the report. It was just for, for, given to us for, for our information. It's a monthly report given okay. for Thank your you. information. Yep. Thank you. Comments from the council? Any other comments? Well, I just want to, I will say one thing. Um, you know, um, we did a nice job at the pancake breakfast this past Yes, we did. Yes. We did. Um, and I, we made I, a lot of pancakes. Yes, I want to commend yes. uh, Chairman Tom Pancake Koenig. <laughs> I believe he made close to 500 pancakes that morning. It must have been a bunch. So, yeah. Yeah. Hats off to you, sir. Thank you. I, you I even got to eat some of my own. And you awesome. did a fine job going, keeping us <laughs> clean. We, as soon as we emptied, he'd get another. Because I worked in the well, survey. I believe my title was gopher. Oh, well, that, was, that is the correct But term. you were the most amazing gopher there. So <laughs> that's, that's a good term, gopher you were. I, we had a great time at the 4th of July uh, pancake breakfast. I did. Yeah. Um, and, enjoyed it. It took group. me a little while that's to get back in the group. But yeah, absolutely a wonderful group really of people. They, they uh, I think they had a larger turnout than they expected. They went through their four or five hundred placemats in about two or three hours. So we were well, running out of eggs. They ran out of that. They ran out of eggs. Had to go get orange juice, and so that, that's an awesome way to be, rather than trying to figure out what do we do with four or five gallons yeah. of pancake mix at the end of the day. So, yeah. um, so it was great. And I, I guess I'm. We're going to get any kind of report back from. People on the Fourth uh, of July celebration, or the Rotary Club. The Rotary Club. Will they give us a, a roundup? Or I'm not sure. We had a discussion um, this morning at our staff meeting about, um, you know, kind of talking about um, <coughs> what went on as far as um, Rib Fest and the and the Fourth of July. So, I, I believe the the weather wasn't favoring um, favoring on, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to see what I can do as far as I don't know if anybody, any of you are connected with some Rotary members that might like to come back and give a presentation on how they thought it went. Um, I, I think Rib Fest would be of, of particular interest because um, it's, uh, it was an, an enormous undertaking for our small Rotary Club to take over an event that already has really big shoes to fill. So, um, you know, wonderful, wonderful thing for them to keep it up because it's, it's one of the things that Merrimack is known for is Rib Fest. So, um, a, an event that's uniquely here. So it would be great to hear from them. I yeah. did talk to Bob Best a little bit about it and, and while the weather was difficult um, Friday and Sunday. Um, if they hadn't had the race, they probably wouldn't have anybody show up Sunday. So yeah. they were glad to have the yeah. race with yep. 400 people or more show although, up for Although that. I was told um, that, um, w was it uh, on Father's Day, which must be Rib Fest, right? Saturday. So, yeah, Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Or Sunday, yeah. So uh, even though it was pouring rain, all the fathers showed up because they got a discount on Father's Day. Oh, did so they? So <laughs> even in the pouring rain, they all came, I need my discount, right? So. Well, I, I went taking. Saturday and had a great time, and, and uh, the weather was beautiful then, so. Yeah, good. Um, it it I'll, was fun. I'll follow up on that. Okay. Um, and the fireworks were amazing. I don't know who, yeah. who was in charge of that, Matt or somebody? Yeah, that, um, I, I was just very impressed with the fireworks this year. Um, they were a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and and uh, actually, because I hung around till the very end, I didn't have any trouble getting out because we just tailed off the last ones of the cars. But we do that on purpose. And, and so if people did have trouble, I apologize. There were certainly people parked on the street for a long time. But that's sort of what happens with crowds and programs <laughs> like that. But uh, the, I thought the fireworks were absolutely amazing. There weren't any screamers. And I heard one or two people, including my wife, wish there were a couple of screamers that went up. But 
can't please everybody all the time. So <laughs> anyway, any other comments from the council? I didn't know what a screaming was. I didn't hear. Oh, just when they when they're going up, they whistle. That no, that it's just screams. they're whistling as they go up, oh. and then blow up at, at the top. So but anyway. I will put those in the <laughs> for the next year bit. On the <laughs> At least one, yeah. Uh, seeing no other comments from the council, um, we come to uh, the end of our meeting and a motion to motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Second by anybody? Second. Second by Nancy. Motion by Bill Boyd. Second by Nancy to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? That passes 700. Thank you very much. Please turn off your mics.